What's going on, guys? I'm Danny B. Joining me, as always, the Flash Man, Andy the Flash Man. Guys, I got something to do real quick. Bear with me. Back at you live at the bottom of the hour. Let's take a look at tonight's action in the NFL preseason football. Minnesota playing Buffalo, and my screen just went dead. I got to bring it back up. Here we go. Minnesota, there it goes again. Well, anyway, I tried to give you the... Bring back what I used to do back in the day, update the scores, and I'm still going to do that once I can find it again. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I did for a long time, Andy. It's going to be another big show. Here we go. Let's take a look at tonight's action in the NFL. Minnesota playing Buffalo. Buffalo minus three, total of 43. Adrian Peterson, doubtful. Also tonight, we got the Bucks at New England. New England minus three, that total of 41, and Brady probable. Raiders at the Saints. Saints minus six, that total is 43. Finally tonight, San Francisco at Kansas City. Kansas City minus one and a half, total of 40. I can't believe that's how I started my career. And excuse me, again, a, a technical malfunction there. <laughs> uh, Andy, how are you, buddy? You know, I'm I just, good. I'm doing good. I just got back from Maryland having a little fun, but I never get any cooperation with technology. <laughs> uh, another big show today. We got the Philly Godfather. He's going to be uh, Philly Godfather on again. He'll be joining us shortly here. He's going to talk about the NFL preseason football, of course. Uh, the interview la uh, Wednesday night with Tim Donaghy and uh, Jim Rome. I don't know if you saw it, uh, Andy. Did you get a chance to see that? I did not. It was on ESPN, though, right? No. It was no. on Showtime, Andy. Uh, okay, there it is. Got to do some homework. Uh, we're also uh, going to be talking sports in general. But, again, we have a, a, another big week lined up in the NFL. And Philly Godfather is going to break down some... Gaming 101. How was your week, Andy? I know you've been out there yourself having a little R&R. &R. Oh, yeah. My week's been great. I've just been hanging out, um, obviously doing jiu-jitsu and stuff, and I'm doing gearing up for... Doing the freaking karate. Uh... What the fuck's up with the karate? <laughs> I Instead of doing the chop-chop, love it. learn a little sports here. <laughs> I love it. Um, eventually, we'll, I'll, I'll start to adapt myself for the football guys so I can not sound like an idiot, but uh, jiu-jitsu is the main thing, and uh, this weekend is... Some photography. I'm photographing a music that's, fest this That's weekend. why we call him the Flash Man. Again, preseason football, second week. You know, we have some games tonight for uh, Philly Godfather's off to a great start. I'm coming back off vacation. It was down in Ocean City, Andy. Uh, nice it's place. Best. It's the first Maryland at it. Had, had a good time. It was it, was uh, that the first time you went? Uh, since I'm a kid. It's, it's a very nice place. Yeah, it's uh, cool. So, again, Andy, so uh, what else is going on here? I got to get you to talk some football. Um, Do you know anything well, about it? I know, uh, didn't the Steelers play? <laughs> okay, Andy. I know that the Steelers <laughs> did play. <laughs> you're, not, you're not very helpful to me, Andy. So, <laughs> we got we got to kill some time here. But, no, we're going to talk to uh, the Philly Godfather about the Tim Donaghy scandal. You know, uh, obviously, Jimmy Batista was involved in it. And Jimmy and the Philly Godfather are very good friends. So he's going to share his insights on, on that interview. Which now, what, for those who didn't see the interview, right? Um, what were there? Was there anything that Tim Donna he said that might not have been to the stories that people have heard on this podcast, or well, what should they know about Tim Donahue that they haven't known in the past? Well, the, basically, Tim told his side of the story, and there was two books written. Tim wrote the book uh, "Personal Foul," and Jimmy and his crew wrote the book "Gaming the Game." So there was different stories. You know, I worked with Tim for two and a half years. And Tim did a great job in the NBA. So I ain't going to dispute that Tim doesn't know his NBA. But in the other book, there's different scenarios that went down. And, you know, it's about, it's up to perception, you know. Andy, uh, it was a short interview, but you didn't get a chance to see it. No, so, but... <laughs> so it's up for controversy, to be honest with you. Um, now, for those who don't, I'm sure most sports guys know who Tim Donahue is, but he was involved in one of the largest betting scandals in in NBA history, um, and it seems like over millions of, of dollars were bet on these games. Now, you're doing a little research, because yeah, that's correct, research. and actually the guys uh, out of Philadelphia, the Philly Godfather and his crew were involved in that aspect, so... Tim provided them with information, and they're the ones that really maximized it, so... Philly Godfather is going to talk about that a little bit. You know, he's not going to spend a lot of time. We're going to focus on NFL football and how turnovers define a team. You know, turnovers, okay. fumbles, interceptions, etc. Andy? Yes. You know, little things that factor in. And, you know, he's going to give you, again, Game in 101. We're going to talk about the book Larceny Games. Larceny Games? Are you familiar with it? It comes out in September? <laughs> um, no, but I know that the author is calling in next week, you said? Yep. Okay. We're going to get Brian Tuway on the on the phone next week. He's going to talk about it. And 
Again, the Philly Godfather is going to break down that book because he has the copies before the public because he's mentioned oh, in it a cool. little bit. And he is the Godfather. And he is the Godfather. But you know what? Again, we're going to have some great guests. We have the Philly Godfather, of course, and I keep saying that. We had the Philly Prince. We're trying to get Jimmy Batista on here, but I don't know if that's going to happen. He's a little gun shy. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, if anybody can make it happen. Because I'd like to, you know, we heard Tim's story, and I'd like to hear it from the other uh from the other side. From the other side, you know? Because, yeah, again, yeah. there's two stories. And, again, I'm not going to dispute Tim did a good job because he did. He did a very good job with me. He went on to open his own site. And, and How long did you guys work together for? Well, since 2010 he started. Okay. And, uh, you know, we were doing business right up to this uh, now, April. He got, out of, um, he got out of prison in 2007, was it? No, and, he, he got sentenced in 2007. Oh, uh, okay. That's then, when it all transpired. And he only he did around 15 months, I think. Something, something like that. Was. You know, he got attacked in the prison. He told the story oh, real, really? real okay. quick. But again, you know, so we're going to elaborate on that. We're going to give you some tips, you know, what to look for the preseason. We talk about depth. Who needs it more? We're going to talk about conditioning. Uh, that's a big factor for these teams. you got to look at a team that's well-conditioned, you know. It, it goes beyond the point spread, too. You know, Andy? Uh, and, again, I wish you can elaborate a little bit. So, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in learning. The, in the future, I'm going to have these guests call right out the door. This way I can talk <laughs> some sports with somebody because nobody wants to hear about your jujitsu, Andy. Not for nothing. <laughs> you know, i got to be honest with you. Choppy, you know, a, a little bit here and there, but, you know, you are, you are a photographer. And, yes, I and am, I wish yeah. you, I know you got some good news, so let's talk about that besides... Uh, oh, are you yeah, talking about my yeah, trip? Yeah, you're going to be uh, leaving us in January because yeah. you're going to be pursuing a career in, in uh in 2014 um i'll i'll be traveling i can't talk too much about the project but i'll be traveling around the world with um with a fantastic photographer um he's super knowledgeable in the uh in the photography kind of like tech and learning how to light things um you could go to his website at strobus.com but um i'll be traveling around with him I'll definitely talk more about the project as it comes up, but um, is this going to be a career changer for you, Andy? Is something that can launch? It's going to be huge. Way? I really hope so. I mean, I've been photographing for about seven years now, and I've worked on you know standard editorial, a couple commercial campaigns, but this is something that I could really uh, kind of make a huge stepping stone in the photography world. So I'm really excited about well, it. Well, well, good for you. You know, and, and a lot of guys that are just tuning in for the first time. We're going to air a show. Right now, we're doing it on Fridays. We'll have, again, various guests throughout the year. Fridays, we're going to uh, preview the weekend games that are coming. And on Monday, we're going to recap it. You know, Fridays, we're going to give some free tips. Monday, we're going to talk about who did what, how they did it, what went wrong, etc. And then you know, we could also give for Monday Night Football. Yeah, we talk a little. Monday Night's a big night, Andy. I mean, yeah. everybody knows about Monday Night Football. That's Even the, I know about Monday Night Football. Excuse me. You gotta stop <laughs> drinking the fucking coffee. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what? While, while we're on the topic of the, of the internet and a lot of people who've been tuning in, We've been looking at the stats, obviously, from iTunes and stuff. We're super stoked that everybody's been downloading and it's even been pretty coming good, on and you know, watching. Right it's out the awesome. door, you know, again, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this. <laughs> I got my radio show that starts up in September on Fox Sports, CBS Sports. Very cool. But I can't be cursing away at that. I can't be using shit-ass fuck and all that <laughs> neat stuff. But totally. that's where the big audience is, you know, on AM radio. But this has a future down the road. You know, it's a building process. and Yeah, we're, I mean, we're I'm trying to get beginnings. Coco Diaz to come on the friggin' show. Eventually, he's I'm so sure friggin he will. He's all over the place, you know, because yeah. it was him that inspired us to do this, you know? And Absolutely, yeah. Him and Lee have been a huge yeah. influence on us. And uh, um, if anybody wants to hashtag the show or anything, I know they have, like, hashtag church or anything. If you're on Twitter, hashtag keeping it real. K-E-E-P-I-N, keeping it real. Um, and once again, it's just been, it's been so awesome to have such a huge reaction so far. Yeah. You know, it's not, I'd like to see millions. Oh, There's only a few yeah. hundred. I'm, you're, then you're getting a little ahead of yourself. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I get excited. I'm not, you know, I'm happy to do this cause it's fun. And again, it, it, it'll get better in time. And once I figure out who to call in right away, cause Andy, I really need to talk sports. Yeah. I, you know, cause that's what the these games. guys, not for nothing. They want to hear us talk about sports. So. Until the Philly Godfather comes on, I'll talk about me and how I got into business. <laughs> right. You heard me run down some scores, primarily for the first six, seven years. That's what I did. Yeah. I ran 800 numbers. We sold picks on 900 numbers. You know, I updated score phones and I gave you a little, you know, scenario there. And yeah. I did that. Made every millions of dollars oh, doing that. Well, yeah, it was a big, I didn't personally make millions of dollars doing that, but we generated millions of yes. dollars doing yes. that, you know. 
I, uh, I did that until 2001 and it was fun. You know, I sat there, but it was hard. Every 10 minutes, I had one day off a week. So every 10 minutes, oh, wow. as soon as the game started to the, to the last game finished, I was updating the odds. I was updating the scores. I was promoting 900 numbers, and, yeah. you know, and it was, uh, it wasn't, but it was fun. It wasn't that a lot of pressure, just a lot of work. Did but, you find a lot of people who were just total junkies on betting, just like couldn't stop the, the, getting yeah, the numbers? Of you know, the, just gam- the gamblers are the sickest fucks out there. You know, they are. <laughs> you know, with the alcoholic and the drug addict, Andy, the mm-hmm. alcoholic takes time before his liver fucking shoots out. Yeah. The drug addict takes some time before he gets a hot bag or whatever, but the gambler can wipe his or her ass out in one setting, you know? It's crazy. Boom, just like that, you can uh, dissipate your bankroll. So, yeah, it's that, like, I mean, gambling could be, a, for a guy like me who doesn't obviously doesn't know too much about the sporting world, like, it could be a scary thing. But after, I mean, and as I'm learning, um, hearing you and The Godfather talk about talk about it, it's, it's getting more interesting to me. Obviously, I'm trying to research more about sports in general, but... It makes it less scary because for the person who, um, like Godfather's podcast, uh, they I mean not his podcast, his website has picks for ten bucks, right? And um, you know, obviously, people eventually want to pay a premium if they're making more bankroll, but it makes it less scary to go into it and, and even well, try to bet well, on you, the game. You're the perfect. Example, you're a novice guy. You don't know nothing. Absolutely. But for somebody like yourself that never done it before, you know, if you're going to do it, you do it the right way. You don't do it at all. Yeah. You know, and a lot of guys try different angles. They try this guy, Andy. And, and since we're killing some clock here, you know, I'll talk about mistakes that these guys make. You that know? would be great. That Something would be great. that maybe can be useful rather than us talking about you taking pictures <laughs> my vacation to fucking Maryland. <laughs> You know, so something maybe. Yeah, you know, but um, some somebody advice, getting you, you, Yeah, let me let me talk. Go ahead. This is my thing. This, <laughs> uh, some advice. You know, a lot of guys just shut. There oh, he is. Oh, Saved oh. by the fucking bell. Every time. Just like fucking that. I love it. Save, Godfather, what's ding, up? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I just saved, saved us. You what, know what? What's going on, guys? Well, I was just How's, t- uh, how you guys working out? Well, to be honest with you, we needed you to call in at one minute after one. Because <laughs> Andy's talking about photography. I'm talking about Maryland and... You know, I'm waiting for you to call, and I'm thinking he's probably on his way to fucking Delaware. He's probably going to Delaware today. Is that the case there, Godfather? Nah, I can't get down there this week. I got so tired of so many other uh, aspects of my life, and I would love to get down there, but uh, I'm going to have to make a pass this week. I can't get down to Delaware to play those parlay cards. Oh, darn it. Darn parlay cards. So you just bang up one of the local guys for a few grand. That's all. That's what you do. But uh, anyway, uh, we wanted to, we talked a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. The Tim Donaghy, Jim Rome uh, show on Showtime, aired uh, Wednesday. Brian Tuini and Larceny Games. Uh, we're also going to uh, talk about a little gaming 101. You know, you've been talking about on your Twitter post about turnovers in the NFL and how they define a team. Would you like to elaborate now on that? Because I know that's a, a big factor for you guys is turnovers, how a team handles them and whatnot. Yeah, well, pretty much, I mean, the team that turns over the ball the most is going to lose the game. So you really, really got to concentrate and try and figure out what makes teams fumble the ball or turn over the ball or what causes defense, what, what makes some defenses better at causing turnovers. Well, uh, can I can I use an example without you losing your train of thought? Mark Sanchez running into his own center and that creating a turnover and eventually a touch. <laughs> would that be? Would, right? would that, that be? Would, yeah, the butt. <laughs> whatever the hell. But I right out my right out the door. That's the first thing that comes to my mind is Sanchez running into his own guy. Because you're saying what causes teams to for, to for turnovers? Well, a center, you know, that'll do it. But it's not supposed to be your own. But anyway, go ahead. Well, I mean, you got to look at the turnover differential in the past from these teams and what causes those turnovers and try and get a predictive uh, feeling of what's going to happen in the following year because most of the articles you'll read about the turnover differentials will tell you what happened in the past and how to gauge it that way. But you really got to check the QBs on the team, the defensive line, and there's certain players that I call game changers. And they're, uh, they're usually like cornerbacks, safeties, guys that can stop the momentum of, a, of an offensive team's game and really change the game with an interception or with a big hit and stuff of that nature. Well, I have to agree. Uh, over the years, you know, I've been doing this a very long time. I don't get into as much detail as you do, but, yeah, you can't win games when you're turning the ball over four or five times in a game. Uh, so turnovers are always haunted teams and betters and 
Some take it, some take advantage, but most don't. Most betters are on the wrong side of those turnovers, and I guess you can elaborate more on that. Well, I mean, if, first you start looking at quarterbacks. Now, you look at guys like Sanchez. He, he had like 18 interceptions last year. Cutler, 14 interceptions. Rowan, 19 interceptions. Okay, that's at the at, that's at the forefront. That's the first thing you see. But why did these guys throw the interceptions? Is it because they're holding the ball too long? Is it from snap to delivery they're just not releasing the ball fast enough? Is it their offensive line just was uh, decimated with injuries and didn't give them enough time to process the information? Is there wide, are there wide receivers? Is there football IQ uh, where it should be? And are they adequate wide receivers for uh, you know for the NFL? Sometimes you get some backups in there and they're just not that good, and the quarterback's forcing the issue. So you really got to investigate what happened last year, and each team is its own situation. So you really got to go back and go through everything that that quarterback did uh, pertaining to why he threw those turnovers. Not just oh he had 19 turnovers or he had 19 interceptions, and this year he's going to have another bunch of tur- uh, interceptions. That's not always the case. It always it, it'll either regress or progress uh, depending on what the situation is with that quarterback and that offensive line. Well, there you go, man. That was well said. I mean, you got into detail because, yeah, people know about, yeah, they had turnovers, but what caused them and how do you correct them or can you correct them or how do you take advantage of them furthermore? So that's a great point. You really stretched that out. And, uh, and you, you also got to look at defensive lines. I mean, uh, look at the Ravens and the Giants. They won the Super Bowl with some of the best defensive lines. They caused so much pressure on that offensive line. They caused the quarterback to make mistakes because they didn't have enough time to sit back there and find the opening. And, you know, you got to look at stuff like that, the defensive line efficiency, how many sacks they got on, on the opposing uh, offenses, how many hits, how many hurries. And, you know, they're going to be causing offenses into mistakes if you've got a better defensive line. So that will help you in determining which way your team is going to go with this turnover differential, which will help you maybe gauge, you know, a small edge in which way you want to bet the game. Well, I'll tell you what, if anybody knows the, the business you do, you've been doing it a long time, and you put so much thought into it because the average guy, including myself, I'm a baseball guy, I've made that clear. I follow moves like from guys like you. It just makes sense. You know, I don't have time to research like that. A lot of time and effort goes into that. But the common gambler doesn't know. The mistakes that they make are fathers. They bounce around. They go from guy to guy. I've been doing this. You're, you're just really starting to come public of late. For years, you've been betting. But just re- recently, you launched your own site. You made an appearance on another forum prior to that. But you're kind of new to the handicappers and how they think the gamblers out there. They, I mean, you know, you know how they think. You know what I'm saying. But what I've seen is they bounce from guy to guy. They don't stick to a, a, a game plan. They pay every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and you got it all over the place. You gotta either do it on your own or stick with one guy or two guys. You can't be going from guy to guy. Average- well, listen. As a consumer, I've always said this: you got to do uh, do your homework. You got to really track these guys, monitor these guys, and know who got you know which one of these uh, handicappers or touts or gamblers, whatever you want to call them, whichever one of these guys is really the real deal, and which one is just uh, you know bullshitting their way through this stuff. You know, yeah, so you really got to do your homework as a consumer. When you find the right guy, stick with him, and eventually, in the long run, he's going to help you turn a profit. And you might catch him at the right time and get a real hot streak. And a lot of recreational betters—that's all they're looking for anyway. They, they, you know, they're betting football. They're not betting, you know, too much of any other sport. Football, college basketball, college football, stuff of that nature. And then, you know, the other time of year, they're really not that gambling that much. Well, that—that's true. That's true. Football is the prime sport, of course. Uh, we get a little guys playing baseball and. I just got back from a week in Maryland and Atlantic City, so I'm getting back to work myself. Uh, but last Friday, and you were on Thursday and Friday, you, you went 3-0 and with Friday action. Uh, you only had one tough loss last week that made the difference. You're sweeping the board. You plan on throwing anything out there tonight for the guys there, uh, Godfather? Something that they can maybe pick up a couple of hundred on? Uh it's 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 a tough board tonight, man. Look at the board. There's Minnesota Buffalo. Buffalo's winning three minus fifteen at Pinnacle. You got New England at home versus Tampa Bay. Braves a little hurt. They might play a little safe to the vest. You know, I mean, they might not yeah. you know, do too much in this game. Uh, Oakland, New Orleans. You got San Fran, Kansas City. You got a little bit of a storyline there with uh, Alex Smith going against his old, old team. But then again, San Francisco don't like to lose either. Um, there, there, there's some games up there. I kind of like Tennessee a little bit. If you can find a three on Tennessee, I think they uh, they got a good shot in that game. And uh, I kind of like Arizona a little bit, man. Their defense looks tough this year, and 
they're going to be, uh, you know, going through the motions more than Dallas is. And they're the two games I'm kind of looking at right now. So you're looking at more like Saturday action then? Yeah. I got you. I mean, that's the problem. Just because there's action, most gamblers, they feel compelled to play. You know, there's a game on. What do you mean? I got nothing. You got nothing. You can well, you got to have willpower in this game, man. You can't just go just gamble to gamble. And you really got you, you really got to ask yourself why. Like, people give out statistics and stats. Like, we're talking about the turnovers. But you got to keep digging and digging and digging. I mean, from the quarterbacks, defensive lines, to cornerbacks, the game changers. Then you got coaches. I mean, there's some coaches – they like taking chances and they're throwing the ball downfield a lot farther, like 20 or more plus yards uh, per play. Like I know North Turner's a big advocate of that. He likes to take chances, and when you take more chances, you take more risk. Well, there's, you know, there's situations where you're going to have uh, more turnovers on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, again, people, just because there's action, they, they feel compelled to play. You really have to take the needle. I say take the needle out of your arm, but... I say that kiddingly, but it's an analogy. Well, I mean, I mean, it is preseason, so you know, you you, you got to take it slow. You don't really know what to expect. You're trying to get a feel which way the game's going to play out, which way the coach has his plans to play certain starters, certain backups, uh, how much talent, uh, you know, in the backup roles on each team exists. Stuff to that nature in the preseason, which it changes totally during the regular season. So it's a totally different market right now in the preseason, and then when we hit the regular season, it's a totally different market there. You got to put it in a different fashion. Uh, absolutely, and that's only a few weeks away. College football starts August 29th. You know, that's less than uh, two weeks from now. You know, everybody's getting pumped up, finishing their vacations, what have you. But, you know, come football, it's going to be a whole different ball game. Uh, we're going to be raising the stakes a little bit here, and you really have to be focused. Let me, uh, let's talk about something real quick, too, the, the Hilton contest. I know we got some questions, how does that work, and you've been a part of it in the past why don't you talk about the Hilton contest, the particulars, what's involved, etc.? Well, it's kind of fun, man. You go out to Vegas. You got to go sign up in Vegas, and if you don't live in Vegas, you need a proxy. So you go out there, it costs proxy. you fifteen hundred bucks to enter. So if you think about it, it's less than hundred bucks a week, right? All right. You got a shot at. I think the prize pulls up to half a million bucks this year. Might be a little less, a little more. I'm not sure. Uh, there may be seven, eight hundred people that are entered the contest this year. So you're going up against a bunch of people. You get to brag every week. You know, I'm up, I'm down. You get to talk shit. You know, oh, I'm beating this handicap. This guy talks right. about how great he is. You know, what my football plays are better. So it's a lot of fun. But you got to fly out there. You got to sign up in person. And if you don't live there, you got to get a proxy. You got to give him a couple bucks. You put in five games a week. Right. And if the game wins, you get a point. If it pushes, you get a half a point. If it loses, you get nothing. And at the end of the year, whoever wins the most games or has the most points ends up winning the whole thing. And then I know second place, they break it down second, third, fourth, fifth. I think the top 20 this year cash. I'm not sure right. uh, the exact numbers. And it's a lot of fun for, you know, a small amount of money. And I think it's worth it, man. It's, it's a great time. And you never know. You might have a great NFL season and win a ton of cash. So, so because I'm a little confused. So you, it's five picks a week, right? Do you have to put them all in? You, get, you don't bet no totals. You just bet sides. How do you get the plays in week by week? Well, you got to. That's why. That's where the proxy comes. Oh, he's the middleman. He, he's the yeah, middle guy. You, you email him the picks ah. or the moves or whatever the hell you want to call him. The, the uh, runner. Plays. You the email runner. him to him. Uh, I think by <laughs> like he's got to turn him in by Saturday morning by eleven. So usually by Friday, okay. you got to give him the games. But see, this is the difference between betting games in the Hilton and betting games on Sunday. You got an extra two days to try and find some more information. Maybe this guy's banged up. Maybe this guy's sure. last second ain't going to play. And you don't know about that early in the week. So as that line moves or adjusts, you only got till Friday with all the information you've gathered to make an educated guess and, you know, which way you want to pick these teams. Well said. And, and that even applies to when you buy in and picks online. You know, they go up early in the day. You know, a lot of services including my own we we have to get them out early in the day and come kick off or first pitch or tip off whatever the sport might be a lot of variables change the point spread so you know getting in early sometimes helps you if you're catching an early line in football monday or tuesday well listen if you're trying to get ahead of the number you're trying to get ahead of the steam it'll help you uh, of course if you if you consistently are laying two and the game closes three and a half i mean you're going to make money in the long run so but uh, some of the biggest moves we have come in late. Some of the biggest wages we have, uh, and it's all you know, 
about information. Maybe we might get some information from an NFL agent or a baseball agent. Uh, later on in the day, we might get some other information that we didn't factor in earlier. Right. And uh, the line might go the other way, and we might bury the other side. So, you know, it works both ways. Absolutely. absolutely. And, again, sometimes your best information, a lot of times it comes when you're least expecting it, correct? You know, a half hour before a game. Uh, and not everybody's going to be able to maximize that because you can't hunt down 5,000 members or whatever you have over there. Yeah, so. when I say information, I mean, listen, there's a, there's a bunch of sharp guys out there. It just doesn't have to be from an agent or a trainer or someone know. you know. It could be from a sharp uh, a gambler out there that that wins consistently, and you got access to you know some of his moves or some of his plays, and you piggyback it because you know the guy's sharp, and you know you respect his opinion, and he might have you know found uncovered something you didn't see in that game, and then it makes sense to you. Oh, he went this way because of this or this, and you know, and that's how it happens. Oh, I definitely. That's how I've made my career following guys like yourself. You know, we just started talking again last November or so, and we're going to talk about how we actually started talking again. Uh, but over the years, I just tracked the guys. I mean, a lot of my people are still offshore, some of them are my friends from back in the day. And they let me know who's hot, who's riding a good streak, and who's. And I go with the numbers. I go with the guys that are in the know. And that, for me, that's easy, you know. And they ain't always right. They have slumps too, you know. They get banged up periodically. And, but in the long run, they make money. And that's what it's about. And that's what you've been doing year in and year out. But uh, let, let's go. Uh, We've covered the Hilton thing. You talked about turnovers. Uh, let's talk about... Yeah, and, and, and listen, the turnovers are huge, man. You, if you can find a way to predict the turnover differential of your favorite team or the teams that you follow or the teams that you specialize in, that's going to be a big help in uh, in turning a profit during the regular season, man. So you really, really got to concentrate. And like I said, it's QBs, defensive lines, and game changers, guys that pick off the ball, guys like... Um, uh, Asante Sanders, he, he was a ball hawk, guy that are always around the ball, Paul yes. uh, from Pittsburgh. I and mean, there's so many guys that, that can change the ebb and flow of the game, the momentum of the game, and there's certain guys on your team that you want, and there's certain guys to look at when you're, you know, you're looking to bet a game. You know, you said Troy, he's always around that ball. He has a... Do you yeah, remember? well, he's a little older now. Yeah, but, but you but remember... Guys that. of that nature, that's, a, that's, that's an example. Guys got, like that... You know, got guys that play like that, and then when you got a QB that doesn't throw a lot of picks, you got a strong offensive line. You know, it'll give you a predictive way. And and even though the turnover differential will change from year to year, well, then you got you got to factor in there's injuries on the team, there's different coaches coming in, players are coming and leaving, and that has a big factor because they tell you, listen, when when the team fumbles a ball, it's a fifty fifty shot who recovers it. And a lot of people will tell you, well, 80% of the, the fumbles or the turnovers are random, but they're really not. I think the percentage is a lot less, and it has more of a factor of who's on that team, who's healthy, who's the coaches, and what's, what, what's the whole mindset of that team. You know what I give some advice for you, sir, is to go out there and do uh, you know, seminars. You should run around the country teaching these young handicappers or wannabe yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to need a speech therapist, and I'm going to need a... Yeah, like, one of those guys, you. they're going to have to teach me how to talk fancy. Yeah, and yeah, like, I didn't know that. Stuff. Yeah, like, did you eat and stuff? Yeah, I know. That's my pride. You know I mean, I'm not trying to sound smarter like a genius. <laughs> you know, listen, the, the, the truth is, listen, I've taken IQ tests, and I'm a pretty sharp guy. But I know for a fact those guys are 100 times sharper than me. So I let them handle that aspect of it. I always try to process the information, and I'm the guy with the shovel. They're going to give me some numbers, and I'm going to say, well, you know what? Dig a little deeper. Right. and see what we get. And then they dig deeper. I'm going to ask, well, why is this like this? And why is this like this? You know what? Dig deeper. Dig deeper. It's like, put this, it's like real estate. When me and you go to look at a property, we see a, a duplex, two units. You know, it's going to bring you in some income, ground floor. When the big boys go there, they look at a duplex, and they look up in the sky. And up in the sky is where the value is. All that free real estate up there. It don't cost them nothing. We buy at ground level, but they're buying at ground level to go up and get all that value up to because that's all free real estate in the sky. And that's how you got to approach gambling. You got to keep digging. You got to keep seeing where the value is, and that's what you got to attack, and that's what you got to expose, and that's how you make your money. And you're only charging ten dollars for them to take advantage of all that knowledge. Ten dollars a month. I mean, Jesus, what, you, you, what I just learned in, in a couple of minutes, and I've been around with you now for about a year. You guys are book of knowledge, and. Again, I don't have the time or the energy to put so much thought into it. So I do, over the years, that's how I've made my living, tracking guys. But I'm glad I got to meet you, God, uh, Godfather. But can we talk about something that, uh, I guess, 
affects me and affects your people or it has in the past. You saw the Jim Rome, Tim Donaghy interview uh, Wednesday night. It's been on throughout the week uh, on Showtime, correct? Yeah, I actually told me about it, and I, and I caught it the other night. I watched it. It was. Uh, it looked like it was staged. It looked like it was scripted. It, it didn't feel real. Uh, and, you know, I don't know Timmy that well. I know him through you a little bit. Now I know, you know, Jimmy knows him real good, and a lot of my friends have dealt with him. Uh, all I was getting was the information and betting it. So that's, you know, that's the only aspect. But it just didn't feel right. It, 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 the whole thing, the whole the whole show, just, you know, with him on, it just, you know, uh, it didn't appeal to me too much. Well, you know, he, they accused Jimmy of the, And there was two books written, you know. Uh, Personal Foul was Tim's version, and then Jimmy... Who's a friend of yours, Jimmy Batista? Very good friend of yours for many years. He's a good, listen, he's a real good friend of mine. I talk to him three, four days a week. Yeah. We go over a lot of things. I mean, that's how I the met one thing you. about Jimmy is he's honest, man. He don't bullshit. So whatever he wrote in the book and whatever came out in that book, it was how it went down. Well, I met you indirectly through Jimmy. He called my office when he found out that Tim and I went to that basketball game. And that's how it all started. And Tim did a fantastic job for me. I can't sit here and say he didn't help. Tim was a book of knowledge. But there's two sides to this story. I would have liked to see uh, Jimmy have a, his shot at it, whether he wanted it or not, because there was allegations about this and that, that, you know, it's, it's up for perception, I guess. You know, only the people that were there really know the truth. But I've been around both parties. And yeah, I'd love to have Tim as an NBA guy, but more importantly, I'd rather have guys like yourself in my corner that are, are more diverse, guys that can help me in not just one area, guys that can help me in college football, college basketball, MLB, NBA. I mean, you guys are very well diverse, and it's just good to have access to you. Well, it's the infrastructure that we were brought up in, man. It's, it's the way we approach you know, each and every sport, because you got to handicap each and every sport totally differently. You got different edges in each and every sport. You got more of an edge in boxing because you got real information. You got stuff that you can, like I always say, you can feel, you can touch. If this guy's vision ain't too good, and you know about it, and they won't license him in this state, but they license him in that state, and you know, I mean, the guy's gonna get his ass whipped because you can't fight with one eye. So stuff to that nature. There's there's different sports. There's different edges in each and every sport. And when you find an edge, you got to exploit it. And when you don't think you have that much of an edge, you got to bet less. So you got to really, you know, do your due diligence and know exactly what you're doing in this business. I have to agree. I mean, I, I, I've been saying this. I couldn't get, I couldn't do anything wrong for the first three months of baseball. Today, I'm back in the game for the first time. I took a week off, but I'm on a shitty run. I think my last 31 games, I'm 12 and and 19. You know, it's been a horrible 31 uh, game span for me. I'm down about 20 grand, but on on the listen, end, listen, you're not the only guy, man. There's some of the sharpest gamblers in the world this year are getting crushed in baseball overall. Yeah. So I wouldn't listen. You've actually turned a profit for you guys, so I wouldn't even sweat it. There's guys like Crackman. I know he got buried. Billy got bet a couple games early. They got buried. Uh, a couple of my friends in Costa Rica, they were betting their games. They got buried this year. This year was a real unpredictable market and. Like, compared to other years, like last year, we were betting seven, eight games a, game, a, a day. Seven, Baseball. eight sides, whether it was first five, it was the total, it was the, uh, the, the side. And this year, we've seen the market changing, so we actually cut back on our moves, and we did real good early. And then, in like, the last, I don't know, two, three weeks, we haven't been winning either. We've been losing a lot of close games. Games, like, One bottom of the games, ninth, man. two outs, <laughs> guy goes up there, hits a two-run home run, or first five innings, uh, bottom of the fifth inning. Teams up one nothing, getting a half a run. Team comes back and scores two runs with one out. I mean, stuff of that nature. So even though our math is close, it's just an unpredictable market this year, and that's why we don't bet as much in baseball, man. It's, it's a tougher market. And I, I feel you with those friggin' one run losses. I'm out of my last nineteen losses. I think twelve of them were by one run in the bottom of the eighth, bottom of the ninth. So, you know, my money was in right. I put my money in right, and that's all I can do, and it's up to fate. Well, especially, especially if you're betting dogs in a situation, because their bullpens are blowing up. It's towards the end of the year. you got a lot of tired arms. So what we did last couple of weeks, we said, you know what, we're still going to be betting the dogs, but we're going to be looking at the first five innings. Right. This way we don't have to put that factor in with the bullpen, because it's so unpredictable. Oof. And you know what, we're still losing the last couple of weeks. So we tried to adjust, and now we're at the point where we're like, you know what, we're just going to pick our spots. If we see something we like here and there, we're going to bet it. If now we're just going to lay off and bet football. Well, it's just right around the corner, and I know everybody out there that's listening, most people don't 
bet the baseball because they don't know enough about it, and it's not really that popular with the betters. But there is value there if you know what you're doing. But, of course, football is everybody's game of games. You work all week. You come home. You, you got that Sunday to yourself. I mean, there's nothing like it, man. Yeah. You go and you, and you talk about it with your friends or your business associates. All week long. And you break down the offenses. You break down the defenses. You break down the situation. Then you break, you break down, down the bankroll. strength of the, the situation. You know, there's nothing like talking about football. <laughs> you forgot to say it again. Usually they break their bankroll, too, at the same time. <laughs> there's, there's, they break a lot of things, you know. And, and that's what we're here to do, you know, especially your site for the $10 a month. $120 a year, you got a small membership fee, you get articles, access to your moves, and maybe not all of them, but there's plenty of value there, and, and you get to, uh, yeah, forums as well, share your stories on the forums, and... Yeah, we got videos, we got the Handicapper's Toolbox, uh, we just added a couple things, we just opened up the live store, you can buy a bunch of my paintings if you're into that stuff, sports art, we're going to be adding more stuff we can sell on there. Um, stuff of that nature, man. We're going to be doing a lot of things, me and you together. Uh, the website's popping. There's more and more subscribers every day. It's probably one of the fastest growing sports gambling information websites, uh, you know, on the planet. And uh, we actually turned a nice profit this year, so that always helps. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. When it'll do that, it'll help you get some uh, some more business work. And here's another thing too. Uh, you tell me. If, I'm sure it happens to you if it's happening to me. These guys that are paying ten dollars a month or whatever that I'm charging, they're going out and putting the plays out on the forums and. What's your, you ain't worried about. Listen, this, for me, Doesn't I'm not giving them you? all my moves. So it don't which, bother you. I, 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 you know, but I'm giving them enough where they can win and turn right. a profit. And if you think about it, if you subscribe to my website, you get my moves for 33 cents a day. They're free anyway. 33 <laughs> cents <laughs> ain't even true. worth I mean, they should get rid of pennies and quarters and just make everything a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, you're getting them for free anyway. So if, if you're going to put them on a different website, I could care less. I mean, you, you're acting like you're doing something, like you're pirating my, you know, my moves and giving them to everyone. They're free anyway, if you think about it. So yeah. it's no big deal. Well, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, we were, I was just glancing over the, um, the forums, which are really active, which, which I think is great because obviously like the internet's a huge community it's a great way to get people talking but um the past couple episodes you've been talking about Ooh, my excuse me. Um, Miami to be to be your team um and I was just looking on the forum and uh in one of the posts it was who will you bet to win on the Super Bowl and um I'm reading that are you are you looking at the Bengals now no 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 I never I never like Miami to win the Super Bowl I liked them last week Oh, okay. I okay. Last week. No, no. I like That's the, fucking Andy. The excuse me. Excuse me, God. I have to apologize to Andy's ignorance. He's, he's not. No, no, no. He's not listening, man. It's no big deal. I know, I know, I know you're, you're green to the whole situation. Oh, so green. He yeah. doesn't know anything, and I apologize. <laughs> 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 but that's entertainment too. You bring them on there. I mean, you know, you gotta add a little entertainment. He's my value technical guy. So whatever you turn... do, because listen, let's be honest. Listen, I'm, I put a lot of articles on the website. Yeah. And some of the most informational articles, how to do things, get the least amount of views, and some of the most entertaining stuff that really, you know, is just fun. It, get, it gets more views than, than the informational side. So you need to, you need to, you need to blend it up. You need to mix it up. <laughs> you need information. You need entertainment. You need some laughs, and you definitely need some winners. Totally. Yeah. Well, this is what we're trying to do, a little entertainment network between the, the two of us here. And Andy has the MC and the, the computer guy. <laughs> I call him Flash. His name's Flash now because he's into photography. And every time I turn around, there's a flash bulb going off. <laughs> but, uh, that's his new name. But going, back to, but going back to your question, I did bet the Bengals to win the Super Bowl. Okay. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl? Probably not, but you're getting some great odds. You're getting great hedging opportunities if they get in the playoffs. And if they get hot late, anything can happen if they stay healthy. As everyone knows in football, injuries are a major factor determining who gets to the big dance and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they got a good shot. they got a good team. they got a great defense. I think that quarterback's going to get better. He's got the fastest uh, snap delivery than any other quarterback in the league. So what that means is by the time he snaps the ball and gets rid of it, he gets rid of it faster than any other quarterback in the league. They got a good running back, great defense. They got a monster wide receiver, and they got a good defensive line. So they got a good shot, man. Very cool. Well, let me let me also elaborate and, and answer a question for you too. What the Godfather can do? Yeah, he put Cincinnati down early in the year, but he can counter that throughout the year. Uh -huh. Whatever money, if they don't win this, he's covered himself by betting against them. Okay. And we're betting more on certain. So they know what they're doing. Not necessarily. Well, if you're betting a team three to one to win the Super Bowl, I mean, you can't really hedge if they. You know, someone gets injured, quarterback goes out, something happens. I mean, you're assed out. You're in trouble. So you can't really. It's tough to make money betting heavy favorites. Cincinnati's not three to one right now. They're uh, no, they were thirty-three to 
one. Uh, they actually opened forty to one. I think they went to thirty three, twenty five. Might be twenty to one or twenty five to one. I forget what they are, but they I, dropped. I threw out uh, as a future myself. I, I put out the pack mm-hmm. in New England. I, I don't think Denver at six to one. If that's what they're still holding, I don't think they're going to win it. But uh, I, 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 you know, I mean, you got Peyton, man. You got to look at the Super Six quarterbacks too, man. I mean, those guys are tough to beat. Uh, as long as they got a good offensive line and someone to throw the ball to. And uh, who the coach is in that, in, in that situation. You got, uh, you know, New Orleans are going to be tough this year with Breeze and uh, you yeah, know, Payne's yeah. back. You got, you know, I mean, Belichick is always a beast as long as Tom Brady don't get hurt. Right. And, uh, you know, those teams are always tough, man. What was that thing you put out on Twitter? That was funny about the pen pal thing with, uh, you put oh, out. Oh, with uh, Aaron Hernandez <laughs> I, and Tebow. I, I lost it. That was good. <laughs> the question, T- uh, Tebow asked Hernandez was, uh, how can I use the shotgun more effectively this year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good tweet. I started ch- I started cackling as soon as I you put up some you good. Have some fun, man. You yeah, know what that's mean? what this is about. You know, we get to talk sports because unlike uh, FM radio, which we start together in the next couple of weeks, I don't. I'm not at liberty to drop some words or choice words. So <laughs> this is fun, man. We can get into a little bit more detail on the podcast. We just got to work on them and. The first 10 minutes was pretty flat today because we didn't know what to talk about. So when you come on, you save the bell. So we'll just get you on a little early. Next week, we're hoping to hear from Brian uh, from Lawson. Yeah, Hills. what happened was he sent me out. Uh, he wrote a book, The Six is In, which was a great book. I tweet it out all the time. It's about how shady the NFL and MLB, uh, NBA, all the leagues are, and how you know they manipulate certain game sometimes maybe for their benefit for better uh, ratings and stuff like that and you know there's refs that have been crooked there's been some a lot of college players who knows about the pro players but in the past there's been some pro players that have been crooked also you know with uh, fixing the games and then he wrote a new book called larceny games and we went back and forth for a couple months before i think the book gets released september 18th or the 14th sometime in september right and uh he uh, gives me special thanks in it because we went back and forth. He interviewed me numerous amount of times with numerous emails about my opinion on the market, on the financial side of it, on uh, the fixing side of it, you know, stuff of that nature. And uh, he's coming out with a great book in September, and I advise everyone to go get it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good books out there, Gaming the Game, a personal. Read them all. You know, come to your own conclusions. Everybody's got the right to do that. You know, you can... Believe what you want to believe in. You know, there's always two sides to a story. But I've been fortunate, you know, over the years I've made my reputation by knowing a lot of people. Godfather started when I was selling advertisement. In the beginning, I started to give you a rundown of how I made my living was doing the score phones back in the day. Up, Let's take a look at your action. Game's underway in the NFL, blah, blah, blah. And then I pitched the 900 numbers, changed the odds, and I sold advertisement too. And through that, I got to meet all the handicappers, and our boss owned the casino, and I told a little bit about that weeks ago. So I've always been in a position where I got to know guys, you know? Because if I was on my... I'm honest, man. I fucking... I'm no better than the next guy, you know? Uh, but when it comes down to knowing everybody... Well, that's listen, what you're, it's you're getting your feelers out there. You're getting real information coming back to you. Yep. That's what's going to make you a winner. Uh, just let's, let's go back to Timmy, what he said on, on the Rome show the other night. Let's do it. He said that uh, I think it was a Lakers Sacramento game in which Bavetta refed it, and the Lakers in the fourth quarter, it was a playoff game. Lakers right. in the fourth quarter got to the line like 40 times yeah. in the fourth quarter, or 27. I forget what the number was. And he mentioned how Dick Bavetta was the NBA's guy. Right. So when they want something skewed, when they want a certain thing to go a certain way, they know they would throw him in there and make sure he officiated the game. Information like that, it's priceless. Okay, it tells you about the past, but you know what? It could still be going on. So you got to look for certain guys, the way they officiate games, the way they look at games, certain situations, and say, you know what? That don't sound right. Right. You know, and, and put and put a small value on it, saying, you know what, I'm looking at this game in this situation. I like, you know, the strength of the situation. The team's on the road. Blah blah blah. This is going to affect the small market. Maybe it'll help you in a certain way. I, I don't know exactly how it could help you. You know what I mean? But you know, I'm just taking that as an example. But you got, you know, as much information you can get. Any. Uh, uh, approach that you can find from anyone else, the way they approach the game, anything that you can get is just all going to help. Knowledge is king, man. I agree. And, you know, while Tim was with me, he was with me for the better part of the three seasons, NBA seasons. He still looked at those reports, who was on the road. And, you know, there was a lot that he left out on the uh, on the interview. Like, it would have been nice to say when he said nobody helped him, nobody gave him an opportunity. Well, 
I well, you were there for him, man. I, That's the other thing. He, listen, you can't shit on people that helped you, man. He's shitting on you. And I don't know why, but from what I know is as soon as he got out, you know, when you get out, it's tough. No one wants to hire an ex-con or no one wants to hire uh, a felon or whatever you want to call him. And, and you were there for him. And for him not to give you credit or not to give you any love, man, it was just plain wrong. Well, you know, I'm not going to take it personal. I knew what I was dealing with. You know, I'm a big boy. But, you know, the bottom line is everybody has the right to spread their wings. And that's what he did. And I wish nobody... Listen, I'm in good hands. I know that now. I honestly, through Timmy... You know, I can't have any animosity because I got to know the guys that are betting the big money. Who would you rather know, a former referee that's out of the game or guys that are in the know to this day betting thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars throughout the year? So I feel like a good thing happened for me anyway, you know. So. And, listen, and listen, and you can take a positive from Timmy's end too because he does know the business. So just to say he's a rat or he's a jerk or he's like, forget it all. This is business, man. You know what I mean? You can't have no feelings. You've got to be like a sociopath when you're a, a professional gambler. You can't have no ties to anyone. Listen, if they give you positive information, you talk to them, you always relate with them, you, you know, and stuff of that nature. So just because the guy's this or that, I ain't worried about none of that stuff. If some guy can give me some good information that I can use on a game or on a wager, well, you know what? I'm going to talk to him. Well, that's what I, that's how I listen. Listen, I had a kid last year. I'm not going to mention his name or what school, but he heard me on Coco Diaz's podcast, okay? And he called me up. He goes, listen, you, 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 you think you guys know something? Let me tell you this. And he started babbling on, babbling on. And I think this kid's out of his fucking mind. This kid was 14 and one going with or against his team. And the shit that he told me. Oh, he was in college? Yeah, he was a, he was a, yeah. he was a senior. Me. And he was telling me, uh, they're all on my payroll. All these guys owe me money. They're a small <laughs> pot. And I'm thinking, I'm going crazy. Again, I'm not going to name drop. I'm not that. But the kid was on the fucking. I didn't trust him because he sounded so fucking crazy. But looking back, the kid was, he knew something. He was saying that. I know. Yeah, he, might, he might win with that team. So you're going to use that information. Now, if he gives you some information on something else, you're going to, you know. Well, if he, was, if you know he wasn't as crazy. But as long as he's giving you the right information on, on the team that he lives with, he knows what he's around, he surrounds himself with, if he's getting some solid information and it can help you make a dollar, man, I'll take that information every day Fuck of the week. yeah. God gives us two ears and one mouth. You got to listen because some of the craziest motherfuckers out there call me up and say some real, you know, stuff that gives uh, input, something that means something. So I listen to just about anybody, you know. Well, yeah, we, we can go on and on about the interview. with. I would like to have Jimmy Batista on to let, you know, hear his side of the story. I don't know well, if Jim, that's possible. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy's, Jimmy's in a whole different, you know, league. league compared to Timmy. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's, to, to Jimmy, it's over with. It's in the past. He's looking forward. You know, I don't know what Timmy's agenda is, and, you know, I, I don't really know him that well. But I would love to have Jimmy on, too. And I, was, I was trying to get them together, actually. We both were. Like you know what I mean? We both We've been were. talking about that for a while, but yeah, I, mean, just, I don't see it happening now. No, it's too far away. I mean, at one time we were close to where we can get a little debate going or whatever or find a way. I was to trying to get them to box each other in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. You, I thought that would have been entertaining. Don't you know that Feldman guy that puts them all together? The guy who puts Damon, this, yeah, they, Damon, Damon Feldman. Yeah, Damon Feldman. We grew up yeah, together, exactly. man. Yeah, Damon's a good guy. That he did been... that celebrity boxing. So I was trying to put it together maybe out in Vegas at the casino, have some fun with it. Yeah. But it's just I don't think it's going to happen. Well, you know what I, we tried and i thought we were close and i guess you know what that really i think started some animosity between tim and myself when i started talking to uh to you guys you know he felt that i was turning on him which i wasn't i was just trying to equate it into a business venture that could be good for everybody and it just didn't pan out which my intentions were good you know you got a ref you got gamblers you got a compelling story or two to tell it, it makes for entertainment value you know so i don't know yeah, well, you do what you can, you know what I mean? But what are you going to do? Shit don't always, uh, you know, work out. But anyway, listen, we've been on here for about 45, 46 minutes or so. We're going to, what we're going to do, uh, Godfather and everybody out there listening, we're going to do one show a week until football kicks in. Then on Fridays, we're going to preview the games on Saturday and Sunday. Monday, we're going to come back and recap. And maybe during the week, eventually, we'll have like that middle of the week show to talk about the Thursday game or whatever the hell's going on. Because it used to be football Thursday and Saturday and Monday. Now it's fucking seven days a week, right? You got part of October when it's football. Hey, listen, the NFL gets it, man. They put the games on. That's what the people want. They give the people what they want. That's why it's the best league in the world. Absolutely. Well, anyway, guys, and uh, Godfather, thanks for your time. And 
We'll see you soon. My boy Coco's up in Boston tonight. I was trying to get him to see the Yankee game, but he can't make it. We're going to be, uh, he's in D.C. next week. I was trying to make it out to see him. But a little shout out to Joey Coco Diaz.net. Joey Diaz.net. Uh, as always, mad flavor. And Philly Godfather, well, I got to say, man, you, you, each week I talk to you, you teach me something that I. You know, hey, I learned from the best. I'm not the smartest guy around, Danny. You know what I mean? Like I know how good I am, and how and, and if I'm not that good in a certain situation, I go out and I get the best to make myself better. Well, there you go, PhillyGodfather.com, the best ten dollars out there. I mean, crazy guys, ten thirty three cents a day. PhillyGodfather.com. We're going to be doing some good things together. You know, we're just uh, working out the the fine tuning part of it and. How everybody can maximize this and make it a very lucrative year. So, again, guys, girls, thanks for joining. And uh, we'll talk to you next Friday. And remember, Philly Godfather, who do you like again real quick before we let him go tomorrow? I like Tennessee, man. Bet Tennessee. There you go. The Godfather has spoken. Lights out. We'll talk to these guys next week.